Hi, my name is Chris Brennan, and the purpose of this video is to talk about the astrological technique known as sect, which is the distinction between day and night charts. Alright, so let's get right into it. So what is sect? Sect is an ancient astrological concept that's been recovered from the Greco-Roman traditions of astrology over the past 20 or 30 years. And uh, when astrologers went back and started studying some ancient texts starting 20 or 30 years ago, they discovered that uh, astrologers used to make an interpretive distinction between people who were born during the day versus people who were born at night, and that this was actually one of the first uh, considerations that any ancient or medieval astrologer would take into account before interpreting a person's birth chart. So it's actually a, a very simple technique, but it's also very powerful uh, despite its simplicity. So the primary thing that you want to do in order to figure out the sect of your chart is you want to determine first if you were born during the day or if you were born at night. And in order to do that, first you just have to identify if your sun is in the top half of the chart, anywhere above the, the ascendant, descendant axis, then that means you were born during the day, since the, since the ascendant descendant axis represents the horizon where the sun rises over the ascendant in the east in the morning, and then it sets in the west at the descendant uh, in the evening. So if your sun in your birth chart is located anywhere in the top half of the chart um, above the ascendant descendant axis, then it's a day chart. Whereas conversely, if your sun is anywhere below the ascendant descendant axis in the bottom half of the chart, then that means you were born with a night chart. So that's the first distinction is simply, is your sun in the top half of the chart or the bottom half of the chart? Once you've established that, uh, what sect is is that it, it's a distinction between two different teams or factions or sects of planets. There's a daytime team of planets that is led by the sun, and there's a nighttime team of planets that's led by the moon. So the sun is obviously assigned to the day, the moon is assigned to the night, then for each of these two teams, the daytime team and the nighttime team, there's one benefic planet assigned to each team and one malefic planet assigned to each team. So on the daytime team, Jupiter is the benefic planet that's assigned to the diurnal or the daytime planets. So Jupiter is a diurnal planet in this scheme and joins or follows the sect of the sun. Uh, conversely, Venus is a nocturnal or nighttime planet, and it joins the team of the moon. Uh, when it comes to the malefics, uh, Saturn is the malefic that's assigned to the daytime team, and Mars is the malefic that is assigned to the nighttime team. Uh, Mercury, which is the seventh uh, traditional visible planetary body, is neutral and capable of joining each either team uh, depending on its condition in the chart, uh, but we'll sort of leave that out for now since that brings us to the primary purpose and usage of sect, which is that um, it alters the expression of the, <clears throat> of the significations of each of the planets based on uh, the spectrum of either constructive or challenging expressions that they could possibly produce. So this is especially useful when studying the benefic and malefic planets, uh, which is to say Venus and Jupiter, the two, the two benefics, and then Mars and Saturn, the two malefics. So the, the quick and easy way to use this technique, there's many different applications of sect, but the primary application in ancient chart delineation is that it was used as a quick way to identify uh, what the most positive planet is in the chart, all other factors aside, and what the most negative planet is in the chart, uh, again, all other factors aside related to sign placement or aspect or anything else. Just all of that aside, what is the most positive planet in the chart according to sect and what is the most negative planet? So uh, generally speaking, the rule is that the benefic that matches the sect of the chart is going to be the most positive planet in the chart, and the malefic that is opposite to or contrary to the sect of the chart is going to be the most challenging or difficult or in some instances, negative planet in the chart. So that is to say, um, the, the specific sort of rule is basically that Jupiter is the most positive planet in a day chart, and Venus is the most positive planet in a night chart. Whereas conversely, 
for the malefics, um, Saturn is the most difficult planet in all night charts, whereas Mars is the most difficult planet in all day charts. So the reason for this is that the benefic planets, when they are in a chart that matches their preferred sect, the, the team that they're on, they tend to have their more positive significations um, emphasized and brought out even more so that they're even more prominent. And that's why Jupiter is at its most positive in a day chart and why Venus is at its most positive in a night chart. Whereas conversely with the malefic planets, um, they tend to have their more negative significations brought to the forefront when they are not in a chart that matches their preferred sect status. So that's Saturn in a night chart or Mars in a day chart. Whereas conversely, the malefics are actually very constructive and you see the more positive or sort of useful end of the malefic significations when they're in a chart that matches their preferred sect. So for example, Saturn in a day chart is typically the more constructive manifestation of many of Saturn's significations whereas Mars in a night chart is also typically a much more constructive or positive manifestation of the significations of, the, of that planet. So that's kind of the, the quick and dirty rule for sect in terms of how it's useful in identifying which planets are going to be functioning in a way that's the most uh, construct, constructive or useful or affirming for the native in whatever part of the chart that they're placed versus what planet is going to give the native the most problems or result in the most difficulties or hardships or um, other sort of keywords like that that you might associate with the traditional term malefic. So uh, there's many different applications of sect, many different ways that it can be used, and many different nuances to those basic rules, but that's really the most fundamental thing that you need to, to keep in mind when you're starting to just use sect for the first time is just that it's very useful for identifying where uh, the benefics and malefics are going to express their, their spectrum in their, their significations in terms of the benefic malefic spectrum. All right, well, that's it for this video. Um, if you're interested in learning more, you can check out my websites at hellenisticastrology.com and theastrologyschool.com. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.